Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Rents here, host of the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to be looking at some surprise cut candidates. Keyword there, surprise. If any five of these Raiders players get cut in the next few days, it would be a shocking, major developing surprise. The Raiders, they're going to get $24.07 million thanks to designated Jimmy G as that post-June 1st cut candidate, which means if the Raiders want to sign any players, because they got 91 guys on the roster right now, if the Silver and Black want to sign any player, they have to cut at least one. They're allowed to have 91 because of the International Pathway Program player, David Agoa. Now, I will admit, I have made shows around this before, and I am a believer if the Raiders decide to cut any players, it's one of the six names that you see up here. Bachman, Tyreek McAllister, Jalen McKenzie, John Samuel Schnenker, Jaden Grant, and then Charles Snowden. But here's the thing. That's not a surprise to anybody. So sometimes NFL teams, when they decide to cut somebody, that's a little bit of a surprise just for multiple reasons. Maybe one reason is, you know, they're good friends with the player and they know if they cut him now that he's going to have a better opportunity to make another roster. That's another reason. Maybe he's just already a bad fit. There's some injuries. They want to get some other players some extra time working in. All of those reasons are why players who you don't expect to get cut but could get cut post June 1st. So coming up here, I got these Raiders surprise cut candidates, and I got them ranked from five all the way down to one. Five, least surprising, one, the most surprising. If the Raiders do end up signing a player, remember, we're going to go live. So if the Raiders sign anybody, and I mean anybody, hell, if they end up cutting a player, we're going to go live on top of that because for the silver and black, you can't have one without the other. If they sign a guy, you got to cut a guy. If they cut a guy, if they cut a player and they're at 90 guys on that roster, the light bulb, the siren should be going off being like, I think the Raiders are about to make a move. If they do end up making a move and it happens between June 5th or June 9th, it's going to be a Jeremy Chugg's takeover show, which means Chugg's is going to be the host. We'll have another producer. Maybe it's Seeps. Maybe it's Trace. Who knows? But I want you guys to show Jeremy some love because he does a lot of stuff here. And I will do my best to be able to zoom in. I got a buddy's bachelor party. So if anything happens those days, we'll do our best here to make it happen. Chugs, though, will make it happen. Here we go. Raiders surprise cut candles. Let's go to number five here on the list. I'm going to go with Nesta Jade Silvera. And the reason why I'm going to go with Nesta Jade is not because I'm not rooting for him. Hell, probably out of all these guys that I'm going to bring up here on the show, he might be the number one player that I'm pulling for, that I'm hoping for, because I do think that the Raiders need some of that extra tackle, like DT, nose tackle, big bodiness on this roster, especially from a depth standpoint. But if the Silver and Black decide to cut him, you do save 915 k You're going to eat literally nothing. He hasn't been participating during Raiders OTAs, which, again, for roster bubble candidates, I do think it's important. He's got to be battling some sort of an injury. There's got to be something going on that's limiting him. But because of that, that gives other players other opportunities to get on the field and impress that coaching staff. The reason why I put Nesta Jade on this show is literally because his relationship with Antonio Pierce with this coaching staff is phenomenal. And I'm going to throw out another name because it happened last season when the Raiders signed O.J. Howard and everyone was like, oh, man, O.J. Howard, I can't believe that he ended up getting cut. Howard asked to be cut because he knew he was going to be a big part of this team. And sometimes when you have that good of a relationship with your coaching staff, you could have a guy like Nesta Jade go, hey, man, I'd actually like to be cut. Or I think I have a better opportunity elsewhere. Or if the Raiders just look at this defensive tackle room, and it's a deep DT room. And if AP has that honest conversation with them going like, hey, brother, like, I don't think you're going to make this team. I don't see how you're going to be able to carve out a role for us in this 53-man roster. That might be for Nesta Jade and his agent enough to say, okay, I respect it. I understand it. Can you let me go now? That way I can try to find an NFL team, a roster, to be able to go through minicamp, training camp, the entire offseason program, and make his way with another football team. That's why Nesta Jade comes in here at number five. Let's go to number four here on my Raiders surprise cut candidates list. It is Amir Abdullah at running back. And... When the Raiders sign Abdullah, I said on the show that I think it has a lot more to do with his special teams ability, being a kick returner, and just helping you out in that regard, especially with these new kick return rules. If the Raiders decided to move on from number eight, if you don't know, he is number eight now, it's going to save them a million dollars, and they're going to eat 800000 
The reason why he's on this list, and I'm just going to tell you that straight up, the only reason why he's on this list is not because of anything Amir has done. Amir, from what I actually understand, has looked pretty good at OTAs, but it's because the Raiders drafted Dylan Laube in the sixth round of this past year's draft, and he's looked really good. So if you're the Raiders and you go, well, we could potentially have our third down back in Laube. On top of that, Alexander Madison is a great pass-blocking running back. To me, if you're only keeping Abdullah to be a special teams guy, maybe I'm really underestimating these new kick return rules a little bit. But there is that part of me that goes, well, third down could be Madison and Lowby because of Madison's ability to pass block. Lowby's ability to just be a good runner between the tackles and catch the football. And then if you are confident in Trey Tucker and you are confident in Lowby's ability to also be a special teams player, you know, what role exactly does Amir Abdullah have? Because... Yeah, you know, Amir Abdullah, to me, the two best memories I have of Abdullah are anytime it's third down, it's it's third in Abdullah. And then the other memory I have is when the Raiders signed Abdullah, I went live here on the Raiders port, and a few minutes later, they ended up trading for Devontae Adams. I like Amir. He's a good player, but I could see them deciding to move on from him and saving a little bit of money. How about this, though? Because this is what this show is all about, surprise cuts. Who would be the bigger surprise to you? Amir Abdullah, type AA. If you're like, Mitch, you should go to one of those meetings. I hear you. I just don't have the time. Nesta Jade, type NS. My answer is very obvious from this video, but I'll let you know again after this YouTube ad break. The bigger surprise to me would be Amir Abdullah simply just because of the depth. And because of the depth at defensive tackle compared to the depth at running back, I think DT is one of our strongest positions. I think running back is one of our weakest positions. On top of that, I always say for those bottom roster guys, you have to find versatility. Amir does have that versatility. That's why I think it would be a bigger surprise if they moved on from him. Let's go to number three here on my Raiders surprise cut candidates list after June 1st. I'm going to go with linebacker Luke Masterson. And Masterson has been a player that a lot of people like and have been a, lot, a, a player that you know, has kind of earned a spot for him on this team, being a UDFA out of Wake Forest. But I'm going to tell you why he is a surprise cut candidate. And I think after you hear my reasoning behind it, you're going to go, you know what, Mitch? I think you're right on this one. He's probably going to be a surprise cut candidate. Before I tell you all that, though, shout out to our sponsor, Prize Picks. And I love Prize Picks. Jeremy loves Prize Picks. And if you care what Jeremy and I say, then hey, go get started with our sponsor here. Because today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. And they've got specials for new and returning users alike. Just go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Download the app today. Use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Price Picks community today. The finals mean more on Price Picks and so do the star players. You get boosted payouts on select basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. There is always action on Price Picks and there is a new perfect time to try something new as basketball is winding down. Make sure to try out esports this month because for every Wednesday and Saturday in June, if your lineup doesn't win, you'll get your entry fee back. Choose from Counter-Strike 2, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and a whole lot more. If you want to see what Chugs had put together for this upcoming season on Prize Picks, because, like, don't get me wrong, I know there's some people out there that are like me where I, there's sometimes I'll put some money down on an NBA game, or sometimes I'll put some money down on an NHL game just because I want to watch it. But at the end of the day, like, you want to actually make some money. And I just have a lot more confidence in my ability to pick more or less in the NFL. It's my specialty. And if you want to roll with Jeremy's season-long picks, you can see them right here. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. So one more time, Price picks is simple. If my dad can do it, you can do it. You pick more than or less than on two to six players, stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in. Get started now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And get a first-time deposit match of $100. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Pick more, pick less. It's really that simple. Here we go. Luke Masterson. Why is he a member of our Raiders surprise cut candidates list? If the Raiders decide to cut him, you're going to save $985,000. And $3,000 for an NFL team is me being like, hey, Jeremy, are you going to finish that last fry on your plate? And Jeremy's going to be like, no. And then they're just going to throw it away. It's not that big of a deal. He played in only 24 defensive snaps the final five games of last season. Anytime I see a player like Masterson, who I think has actually done an okay job when he was on the field, but you got a brand new regime. 
Okay, brand new regime and a player that's easy to move on from. I look at snap counts. When Antonio Pierce took over, the Luke Masterson snap counts, pew, they went down. And I know that they want to see what they got in Divine Diablo. I know they love Robert Spillane. They've hyped up Tommy Eichenberg enough where they said he might even have a green dot at some point. And for this organization, I would imagine they're going to keep Amari Bernie based on what Tom McMahon had to say, Raiders special teams coach. I do think that Bernie's going to have more of an impact on special teams than a guy like Masterson. So to me, Divine Diablo, Robert Spillane, Amari Bernie, Tommy Eichenberg, those are your four linebackers. Like, I get the fact that some people might want to keep a fifth, but just based on the way that Patrick Graham runs his defense, linebacker's really not that important. I like Masterson. I wish him the best of luck but I don't see him making this team slash. He could be a surprise cut candidate because they do like him a lot and maybe he can find his footing with some other football team. Let's go to number two here. It's Chris Smith, the second, better known as also Christopher Smith, depending where you look for him. Second year safety coming out of Georgia was drafted in the fifth round of the Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler regime. And you're going to see this common. New regime means anything's possible. This current regime doesn't know anything to Chris Smith. And if anything... You know, I said that the Raiders drafted Trey Taylor in the seventh round, and some people might be going, well, Mitch, the Raiders draft Taylor in the seventh, but Smith was drafted in the fifth. Don't matter, because this organization is tied to Trey Taylor, and Taylor's been looking really, really good at OTAs. So if I'm sitting up here going, Taylor gets that boost, the Raiders can cut him, you're going to save $915,000, and all 22 defensive snaps came in the Chargers' blowout win last season for the Raiders. So he played 22 defensive snaps last season. All of them came in a 63-21 to 21 blowout. That's concerning to me. On top of that, though, his special team's usage decreased in snaps. Like, the Raiders gave him an opportunity to get some more work when AP got hired, and then the numbers went up, and then over the final five games, they went down. That's a key to me to say, it. okay, they saw what they saw, they understand what they got, and they're going to move on. They re-signed Isaiah Palomeo. They made an effort to go out and get Trey Taylor, who won the Defensive Back of the Year award in college football last season. They love Marcus Epps. They love Trevon Merrig. I do see the Raiders keeping Smith if he wants to you know, stay a part of this team and to be a part of the 53-man roster. But I can also understand because Smith is a very beloved player in general. He's a super nice guy that... Could you see Antonio Pierce going, you know what, man, you're going to be a practice squad guy. Could you find a roster spot on another team? I will say there is one other NFL team, I'm not allowed to reveal who it is, that has been calling and asking about Chris Smith. So before we get in to the number one player, and I mean the number one player that I think would be the biggest surprise cut candidate, I want you to check out who I want the Raiders to sign. If you're watching this video live, there's not going to be anything right here. If you're not watching this live, there's going to be a link to 10 players that I want the Raiders to sign because if you sign one of these guys, you're going to have to end up cutting somebody. Let's go to number one here, and I think this is going to be a little bit of an eye popper, but hey, F it, let's do it. Michael Gallup, wide receiver, comes in here. I think it would be the most surprising cut candidate for the silver and black. The Raiders gave him a contract this offseason, one year worth up to $3 million. The fact that a guy like Gallup with his name value coming from the Dallas Cowboys getting a one-year deal worth up to $3 million tells me not a lot of people were interested. If the Raiders cut him, you save 922, you eat 827, is what it is. And Gallup has yet to practice at Raiders OTAs. And one of the things that Chugs and I were talking about when the Raiders signed the former Cowboys receiver was we have a really good Cowboys source here at Chat Sports, and he said that he's playing on one leg. What happens if the Raiders sign Gallup, they see him, and they're like, this guy's not healthy. This is not what we originally thought was going to happen because the Raiders go out, you sign Gallup. A few days later, you go out and sign Jalen Guyton, who also is not practicing. So if I'm the Raiders, I look at Gallup and I go, offers me nothing on special teams, and he can't stay healthy. If your medical staff is already being like, hey, man, this guy is not where we thought he was, that's where you could potentially see a player get cut Maybe he finds himself another roster spot. But you're already hearing Tom McMahon, Raiders special teams coach, saying, like, we need extra special teams, guys. And right now for the Raiders, they've had multiple wide receivers missing some time. And if I'm Aiden O'Connell, if I'm Gardner Minshew, if I'm this new Raiders offense, i got to be able to figure out what I got in some of these guys. And if you don't know when Gallup's going to be able to get on the field, that could be an opportunity to say, you know what? We kind of regret the fact that we did this, thanks, but no thanks. We're going to move on and just kind of wipe your hands. You're going to eat the dead money because 
if Gallup can stay healthy, he can be a good wide receiver three behind Jacoby, behind Devontae. Can be a good fourth target behind Brock Bowers. Can be a good fifth target behind Michael Mayer. If you don't know what you got, though, because you don't ever know when you're going to see it, that's the reason why you move on for a player, especially with a team that's got a brand-new head coach, a first-year GM with, that, with this new team. A lot of different mixing parts. That's why Michael Gallup is a surprise-cut candidate. So one more time here, if you want, take a screenshot of this, post it on Instagram, post it on Twitter. Make sure you tag Jeremy Chuggs and I. I'm at MitchellRens365. Jeremy's at Jeremy Chuggs. Let me know where you agree, where you disagree. Again, it's surprise cut candidates where if the Raiders say, hey, we want to go out and sign uh, Xavier Howard, Stephon Gilmore, whoever the hell it is, you have to move on from somebody. If the Raiders cut any of those five players, there'd be a lot of Raider fans be like, holy shit, I can't believe that happened. That's the point of surprise cut candidates. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you're not watching this live, remember, and we go live every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. If you're watching this live, it's about to get wild.